Dr. Phil, good news. That's right, they caught her. Hey there everyone, I'm Chris Yee, and we're going through my top 100 games of all time. This time 70 through 61. This is the part of the list where a lot of viewership falls off. So if you're still watching this, uh, kudos to you, because uh, a lot of people aren't. But I'm having fun doing this, I hope that you're enjoying it as well. We're going to be discussing 10 more games here. There is going to be in this particular chunk one new, uh, one new to me top 100 game. Uh, and I think the rest of these are all going to be classics that I've had at least since last year, if not for longer. So, uh, when I say classics, I'm throwing that word around very loosely, the way that Mike Delisio does. So, let's start it off with my number 70 this time, and that is Glory to Rome. This is a, this is a very multi-use card game. I like multi-use cards. But uh, this one is probably one of the most multi use of all of the multi use cards that are out there. The multi-use cards universe. This one is fun because you are trying to build up a tableau of ridiculous powers, like absolutely off-the-wall powers. And this is a, of the design mentality that if everything's broken, then nothing is broken. And it certainly feels that way. There are, there are a lot of things in this game that I almost shouldn't like, where you can steal resources from each other, but it's done in such a, a tongue-in-cheek kind of a way. And yet at the same time, the game has a, a ridiculous flowchart of how all the actions work. Once you get past the strangeness of it, it is a very smooth playing game. I love the idea that you play actions and other players can follow them if they have the cards to match it or not, but there's definitely some wild cards that you can spend turns just getting so you can follow any action whatsoever. The turn sequence, the turn order matters so much. There's so many good things I could say about this, but this is, this is wild card game at its best. Uh, last year, this one was at number 43 on my list. So, it's uh, now at 70. It's definitely fallen a few spaces. It looks like Glory to Rome slipped on Greece. My number 69 is one that's been dropping little by little over the years. It's Concordia. It's 69 this year. Uh, last year it was number 47. And back in 2018 when I first did this list, it was number 32. So, still holding on very well. This is a classic game about building up uh, your presence on this map to be able to collect better resources, buying up cards. Because it's one of those games you play out a card on your turn. Next turn, you play out a card. And you keep doing so until you want to call back your whole hand of cards and refresh. And that is just an exciting moment when you get back all of these cards that you spent. And you say, oh, I have all these great plans of what I can do now. But as you play those cards, you go, oh, I could just refresh right now. But I have a lot more cards I can do good things with. Are they the best things to do? So Concordia, for as dry and Euro-y as it seems, it just has a lot of great moments of excitement, very fun to play, so that's why it still sits on my list at number 69. My number 68 is a bit of a sheep in wolves clothing. It's a Euro resource management game in an Ameritrash setting. That is Adrenaline. Adrenaline is so fun as you are one of these different characters running around an arena trying to shoot each other. What it really is, it's a bit of a resource gathering and delivery type game, but the delivery is bullets to your head regions. I really like this one. The setting, the theme of it, does make it a little bit more light and jovial, and I really do what, like what's going on, because it does feel like you're firing a rail gun, or you have a machine gun, or you're going with the, uh, the rocket war hammer as you're smashing people. But, at its core, it's got very, very solid mechanisms. I really like what's going on with this one. Adrenaline's been on my list since 2018, uh, where it was number 48. Last year, it went down to number 97, just because I hadn't played it much. This is a three-player minimum game. I didn't care for the expansion, which made it playable at two players. That wasn't for me. But, it's hard for me to... Uh, well, it was hard for me in the past to get three-player minimum games played all the time, because it's primarily Wendy and I. But I've had more chances to play it lately 
So I, I definitely think that for that reason, it's kind of moved up for me again. It almost fell out of my top 100 and it's sliding back up. Taught this to Camilla and she seemed to enjoy it. And as I teach this to people, they always walk away and say, oh, this is awesome. So my number 68, Adrenaline. My number 67 is kind of a nice, almost simpler game. It's a medium weight one, it's called Gold West. It has a fun little theme of, of trying to mine out gold nuggets and stuff. You're building up this little boom town and everything. This is the bigger version of a game I mentioned earlier on the top 100 called Rolled West. That's the roll and write version. But this one has a lot of things going on. There's a map presence. You're trying to get majority of different tracks and you're trying to capitalize on the boom town there. But one of the most fun things about it is you have this Moncala type thing as you're, as you're uh, having your resources sift down your, uh, your sluice box and you're trying to maximize what type of resources you're allowing to kind of fall off there that allows you to build up in the town and to get different contracts and stuff. This is a great game. It has a, a very simple kind of structure to it, but what you're doing, you're always engaged, you're always interested. Other people move around the map, but they reveal new parts of the map that you could build into, so there's just a lot of, of positive benefits as you pay attention to other players' turns. Very fun, simple game. Great theme, and I'm excited that this one got picked up recently by Trick or Treat Studios in their Classics line, a new line they're starting. So it's going to get a, a reprint, has some nice art to it, a Vincent Dutrait cover. So I'm excited to see more about that one, my number 67. Uh, last year, it went down to my 93, and then the year, uh, in 2018, when we first did this list, it was 63, uh, or uh, 62. And so it's kind of bounced around a bit, but it's, it's kind of going back on the upswing. I really like this one, so I'm excited to play it some more, especially that new version. So 67, Gold West. My number 66 is another little piece of evidence that I really adore. Phil Walker Harding as the designer. That's why 66 is Summer Camp. Summer Camp is a fantastic deck building game that is so introductory and yet intriguing and fun and encourages you to come back to it. This one is from Buffalo Games. It has really nice production for being very affordable. And it's just fun as you're trying to race across these three tracks. The deck that you build will allow you to move your campers forward. Adorable, fun theme with cute artwork, but at its core, a very well-made deck building game that I really enjoy. You can mix together three different themes, and I believe the box comes with about eight or so of them. The only thing that I would love to see would be more expansion boxes for this game. Uh, this was 49 for me last year when it was first on the list. Uh, this year it's 66. I mean, for such a light game, it's, uh, it impresses me enough to stay pretty high up on my list. So 66, Summer Camp. Number 65 is my second Phil Walker Harding game in a row here, and that's Sushi Go Party. This is such a fun card drafting game. I love the original Sushi Go, but I love the extra variety that comes in the party version of the game. It does require more setup, but it's still so simple to do, and I like doing it, and therefore you can still play this one very quickly. Uh, my daughter loves this one too, and she loves being able to pick some of the appetizers or which type of role we're going to use. But really, it's just a simple card drafting game. Pick one card, pass the rest along, and you're trying to score the best hand that you can. I love the variety that comes in this tin with the, the bigger edition, the Sushi Go Party version of it. I love that there's some really zany cards. We even bought several promo cards so that there's just extra. I would wish that there would be even more of them, but hey, you know what? With what we've got, we still play this one a lot in my household. So I really like Sushi Go Party. Uh, sitting at 65 this year, it was up to 32 last year, and back in 2018, it was at 60. So it's kind of bounced really high, I think, when we're playing with our daughter a lot. And now it's comfortably residing at 60 again, even though we still do pull this one a lot out as a family. And you can even work it with big groups. So number 65, Sushi Go Party. Number 64 is one of my weirdest picks, and that is Risk Star Wars Edition. This is not like Risk. It's not like the classic Risk, really, except that you chuck dice and you destroy other units. But this one is the threefold story of the Battle of Endor at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi, and you are programming these cards out and then activating them, but each card gives you two or three options of what you want to activate. It gives you a lot of good choices. You're kind of locked into a sequence, but then within that sequence you can pivot and move and, and try something different. Are you as the Rebels going to try to, to blow up the shield generator protecting the Death Star? Or has the game state changed that you were going to do that, but now I need to move my squadron of B-Wings and destroy some more TIE Fighters before they take out too much of my fleet? For being such a simple game, it's very fun and engaging. It's, it's sitting at 64 this year. Last year it was at... Uh, well, last year it was at 31. Back in 2018 it was at 49. So it kind of bounces around the middle here. 
very excited as my daughter is almost old enough to play this with me. And I wonder if it will move up or down, honestly, after that point. So my number 64, Risk Star Wars Edition. My number 63 is a first time entry on my list, though it's been around for a few years, Santa Maria. Santa Maria is a game that uh, is on my radar because of one particular person, Dan Serza. Thanks for teaching it to me at one of the Dice Tower events. I think it was East. I think it was Dice Tower East. Yeah, you thought it was Z Garcia. Ha! No, that hack. Actually, he's the one that put this one on my radar. Z talks about this a lot, and I can see why. It's a great dice drafting game. You get different... That was awesome sauce. You get different tiles that you're going to put onto your board here, and then you draft a die, and you're going to activate all the buildings that you have on there, but then the die covers up the last spot of that row or that column. You get blue dice as bonuses to activate rows across. But once the building's covered up, if you activate it again later, you have to skip over that one. So it gives you lots of really good juicy choices for what looks like a very silly doofy game. The, the art of this kind of belies really that this is a thinkier game and, and there's more to it going on than what you might expect. I really have found myself liking this one. I love dice drafting as a mechanism. So that's why it's a first time entry here. I anticipate this one uh, staying on here in the future. That's my number 63, Santa Maria. 62 is a game in the Dice Tower Essentials line, Aquatica. This is very likely my favorite in that whole line of games. It has great production, it has awesome little stingray pieces, but also has these dual layer boards that you tuck cards into and you start sliding them up. And it has a real good use to be this nice production value because once you raise a card all the way, you can score it, but you keep getting all these great bonuses along the way. It does the Concordia-esque thing where as you play cards out, uh, you eventually will do an action where you pick them all back up and it feels so good. Great theme, amazing artwork, cool setting, great production, and fun little ways of comboing all sorts of card actions together. So that's uh, Aquatica. Last year was 46, so this year at 62. Not too big of a drop in reality. There's so many good games that come out. This is one that still gets played. So 62, Aquatica. Number 61 is Adventure Tactics. This is a uh, this is a large size, almost kind of like Gloomhaven sized box, but it's for families. This is such a cool adventure game. It is basically kind of themed around uh, it, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, Adventure Tactics, right? Similar type of naming there, and that's because it's a tactical game. You're running around doing a boss battle, and I'm finding myself that I enjoy boss battlers more than I enjoy necessarily dungeon crawlers. Uh, Adventure Tactics was 75 last year, moving up a few spots because we've played through a whole campaign, 10-ish games. You level up, you can get different characteristics based on which jobs you're trying to get, which classifications, and you can cross-train, and you can, or you can specialize all the way down in one, and it was so fun to go through that. And I like the campaign short enough that I'm excited to, at some point now that I've stepped away from it for several months, to go back to it with my family again, and play through, and I'm going to try all these different things. I was a beast tamer last time with some training of rogue in there. Well, I'm going to go the complete different direction. I was a fighter paladin. Well, I'm going to make a different combination. So, uh, my number 61, an awesome game for families that you want that Gloomhaven type of a feel, but it's more age-appropriate for younger, Adventure Tactics. So that is going to do it for another one of these lists. This is uh, a lot that I understand that if you're watching this, you're seeing a lot of games, you're getting bombarded. So hopefully you take a little bit of time and just kind of appreciate what's, what's in there. And maybe you're finding some things that are for you and probably some things that aren't really, but that's okay. Until next time, thanks for coming by another one of the top 100 games of all time as of 2023. My name is Chris Yee. Hope you have yourselves a great day.